Well, the last time that Arsenal did it was in the 1947-48 season for Liverpool. It was the 2019-2020 campaign and for Aston Villa, Nigel will remember this one, 1898. Could we see <laughs> the team top on Christmas Day win the title this year? Uh, this is Betting Weekly Premier League show. You're with myself, Dan Roebuck, alongside me, Nigel Seeley and Jack Wright. Nigel, after this round of matches, we will know who will be Christmas number one. Does it matter? Good morning, guys. Uh, nah, it doesn't really matter. I think it, it, it makes it more of a... Is, is it the stats, the stats for you that you come out? I don't remember that one much, so I do remember the 47-48 season. I remember that vividly. <laughs> uh, I don't remember, just, just after the war, cold day, I think it was that Christmas. Very cold Christmas. <laughs> Winter of 48, 47, very, very cold. I do remember that one. But uh, no, I don't think it really matters that much. I think we've got a title race here, and as we're seeing in this, this title race, is that the league's changing hands week in and week out. It's exciting times. Uh, usually with Christmas, we only have two teams that can win it. So uh, Christmas, when they get to Christmas and they're, they're top of the uh, of the list or top of the, the table, then that makes a, a bit of a factor because they could usually sometimes be five or six points clear or maybe sometimes even bigger. This time around, we've got four teams even with a genuine title race, five if you count Spurs, which they're not out of it. And we will see the lead at the top of the table changing throughout the, the new year. And uh, I think we really, I think it's going to be more important who's top at Easter rather than who's going to be top at Christmas. 45% of the teams, uh, Jack, top of Christmas go on to win the league. We've had 124 years of the English top flight, plus 122 in betting terms. Um, should we just blindly back whoever is top next week? What are your thoughts on it? No, not at all. Uh, Nigel's absolutely spot on. Um, same thing. Yeah, really excited. The fact that we've got a really interesting title race here with a couple of new names in the mix or certainly one in Aston Villa who have been sensational this season continue to get wins uh, Manchester City we wait to see if they can uh, turn it on like they normally do once they come back from the uh, Club World Cup and Arsenal Liverpool again that I said it's nip and tuck at the top so uh, really exciting stuff uh, and uh, there's some value to be had and we'll see that continue as the new year starts. Uh, yeah, City can't be top, of course. Uh, Arsenal can be. Last five times that they were top at Christmas, they didn't win the league. Uh, Liverpool have done it more recently. Title odds, City plus 125, Arsenal plus 250, Liverpool plus 275, Villa plus 1,400. We've danced around the title odds all season. We keep looking at the City uh, price drift out. Uh, Nigel, are, are they better ball yet? I mean, I know that we, we both like Liverpool and, and Arsenal, obviously, second favourites at the minute. What, what do you make of the Man City price off the back of their latest... Um, you know, a game which they, they dropped points in last weekend. Well, the way I look at it is if it if Man City changed positions with, say, say that it was Arsenal in Man City's position, what price would Arsenal be? 10 to 1? Maybe 12 to 1? Yeah. Uh, what price would Liverpool be in Man City's position? Similar price, 10 to 1, 12 to 1. So they're no value at plus 112. Everyone just expects they're going to do what they did last year. But that was a Haaland that was fit. Clearly got an ankle. He's got problems with his foot. Um, we think there's doubts about the team. And, you know, to the go on them runs that they did is very hard and they're going to have to go on one of them again. And uh, this, it's a tougher Premier League now at the top. There's there's three or four contenders, five contenders, as you know, we said about it. To get to the, and they're just throwing away leads like they never have done before. There's something not right. Defensively, I've said that there are shambles. And, um, you know, last week, you know, how many times you, you see Man City tune up with, what, 25 minutes to go at home to Crystal Palace and not get three points? Never. And, uh, you know, I, I could, you know, another bet that we should have cashed with the minus two, um, a push at least we should have got. There's no way that could have happened, but it did. So um, you've got to put yourself into the position of what Man City is. And I think everything has to go right for them, for them to win. That, you know, and they could be really far off the pace when they come back uh, from the, the club championships. And they've got a European Cup to defend as well. So, no, not for me. Um, is there any value elsewhere at the minute, Jack? Do you think the price is about right? I mean, from a Villa point of view, I mean, I know they were given a helping hand at Brentford last time out with a red card and they were losing in that game. But but just to win it, you know, just signifies maybe that they are, you know, made of, of maybe sterner stuff than perhaps we think. Yeah, they keep winning. <clears throat> We know what their home record's like. That's going to be tough to maintain that. Of course, it's been a perfect record over the last, what, 14 games now, 15 games. So for that to continue is, let's be honest, it's not they're going to win every game all season. So they got they are going to have to pick up wins away from home. We highlighted them, uh, I think it was about three or four weeks ago, just before the Man City-Arsenal games. I think they were um, plus 4,000. 
I think that was when we said that would be a good idea to get on board with them and then even look to trade out. So you've got a strong position. That certainly is the case. We can see that now at 1,400. Um, I wouldn't necessarily back them to win the title because I don't think they will. Um, and I think the value is probably gone in that respect at this moment in time. They've obviously got a very winnable fixture coming up this week, which we'll uh, come on to in a little while. And uh, Arsenal and Liverpool play um, as well. So um, they could well make big ground this weekend. We'll wait and see. But um, yeah, I think the prices are probably about right. And as Nigel says, you know, City uh, are, are plenty short enough uh, given their current situation, uh, position and uh, how they look. Off I, the I actually well. don't think the value has gone. I, I disagree. Not, no, I don't. Yeah. I, I think the value, I think they're going to get large. I'm going to think they're going to be single figures, Villa. I think this reminds me of a Leicester and I think the value gets stronger as the season goes on. People look at, oh, I missed 33 to one, I missed 50 to one, I'm not going to back them at 14 to one. Well, again, if you put Villa into sort of a position of Manchester, uh, 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 say Manchester City or or, or uh, uh, Liverpool, what price would they be? You're seeing that reflected here. And if you look at their fixture list, their fixture list running into, say, into, into April is very very easy they play Manchester United twice and other than that they've got Newcastle at home they play all bottom half sides they don't have anybody like Manchester City they have Arsenal away and Man City away but that's in April their running is is the the next two months is really really winnable their home matches are Sheffield United Burnley Newcastle are down to bare bones Manchester United not in the forest that's their running up until that period of time and on the road they've got to go to places like Sheffield United Everton Fulham Luton I'm telling you now, they are not. They're, they're going to go one way. They're going to go shorter because the other team is going to take points and drop points with Champions League and with a cup competitions that they're playing as well. Villa, Villa are big, big contenders here, and I think as we go on in the season, that people will just have that impression they can't win it, they can't stand the, the test of time, they won't last the course, and that represents bigger, bigger, bigger value. I, I think, I think you can see them go. I think they could hit sort of around about five, six to one in, in the next couple of months. I think as well, and we've talked about this before, and we'll get onto the picks in just a second. The Leicester money came in the new year. It, it came in Jan and Feb. It might, it, it, no one was backing them at 5,000 at the start of the season or in the autumn. That's when the, the big boys um, put the big money down. Be interesting to see what happens to the Villa price. And let the record show, incidentally, that it was Jack, not me, that said... Villa Sheffield United was a winnable fixture. This is the first. This is the first game we're going to preview <laughs> yeah. with Nigel. Villa minus five thirty. Sheffield United plus fourteen hundred. Draw plus six hundred. This is Friday, three p.m. Eastern. Here, the goal line is under and over three and a half goals as well. Villa will go top with a win. Nigel. Well, you look at Villa's home record: eight wins this season. Eight, you know, it's eight wins, eight matches. It goes on for fourteen matches unbeaten at home. All wins as well. Top goals, top home goal scorers in the Premier League, 25 goals, the second best defence in the Premier League, arguably the best goalkeeper in the Premier League, in my opinion, one of the best goalkeepers in Martinez. Uh, they've only conceded five goals at home, only Newcastle can better that with four. So Aston Villa, on their home form, are the best team in the country by some distance. And they're playing a team that have got the worst road record in the country by some distance. No wins in eight matches, seven defeats, one draw, and only four goals scored. So. Um, where do we go here? I mean, it, it may look as though it's a little bit too obvious on the on paper to actually make a massive case for Aston Villa, you know, but it's been a funny season and we've seen things that we make huge cases for on this show haven't go our way. But this is has to be a match for Aston Villa to win. If you look at Sheffield United, they've made changes in their manager. Uh, Wild has come back. He's made it, they try to shore up the defence. That's what he tried to do. But by shoring up the defence, he's made them less entertaining going forward. Their metrics going forward are even worse. He's trying to get nil-nil draws. He's trying to hit teams on, on, on the break and get breakaway goals. So defensively, they've, they've shored up a little bit. But attacking-wise, they're, they're atrocious to here. So where do we get the value on Aston Villa? How do we turn this sort of minus... What are they, minus 550 to win the match? Minus $5 yep. to win it? How do we turn that into making it an attractive price to, to get some value? And I've gone back to something I... Didn't want to do, but I had to on this occasion. I've gone back to the same match, parlay, the same game, parlay. Or for an old money, it's the win to nil. So I'm betting Aston Villa to win the game in the parlay and under half a goal uh, for Sheffield United. So Sheffield United not to score. Aston Villa to win to nil. And that enhances your prices to minus 110. Um, if you look at Aston Villa wins, though, a lot of these matches they concede. Like you look at their games, they played uh, in their, their matches at home this season. Six of them they conceded in, only two they've won to nil. But they are the last two matches, and they have been against Arsenal and Manchester City. If we look at uh, 
to, to Sheffield United, six road matches, the last six road matches, four of them, they've lost to Mill. So Sheffield United don't offer anything here. And I think people are looking at the early form of Aston Villa and looking that they conceded goals, you know, winning 4-1, 6-1, 3-1, stuff, stuff like that. Now they're getting involved in a, in a title battle, although they, they're considered a title battle. They're, they're a little, little bit different in their approach. They're keeping it a little bit tight at the back. Uh, they've got the pace and the power up front to score goals. And that back four, back three, whichever they decide to play here, has, has got something about them. And they get, they're get they young. They're gaining confidence week in and week out. And I do not believe that Sheffield United have the capability to score here. Their lowest scorers in the Premier League are only four goals on the road. They've only scored 14 all season, which is by far the lowest in the Premier League in 17 matches. And Aston Villa, uh, with that mean defence, marshaled by a superb goalkeeper, to get a little bit of juice in your price, I'm going to go for Aston Villa to win to nil at minus 110. But on Bet Rivers, you've got to do it differently. Bet Aston Villa to win and bet Sheffield United under half a goal and you'll get minus 110 for your money. That game is Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Saturday morning, 7.30 Eastern is West Ham versus Manchester United. Has been support for United over the last 24 hours or so. They are now favourites. They weren't earlier this week, plus 155 West Ham, plus 165, maybe off the back of West Ham's fairly tepid exit in the League Cup. The draw is plus 265. I must admit, Jack, if there's one game that I go nowhere near this weekend, it is this one. I've no idea what United are going to do, certainly after last week's draw at Anfield. But you know no fear. You are diving in. What's the play? Yeah, I'm going for West Ham on the Asian line zero, which is effectively tie no bet as well. You can play it either way. Same same scenario. It's uh, minus 107 last time I checked. So, yeah, on the back of West Ham getting absolutely thumped last night uh, after I'd put my selections forward, they uh, uh, have drifted like a barge. So um, I just enjoyed the interaction with all the Man United fans after last week saying they were going to get absolutely <laughs> thumped by Liverpool. So, uh, yeah, it was fun. So they can uh, come, and come at me again here. So another fade on United. Uh, quick turnaround for West Ham, of course, um, but they are used to that this season and have done pretty well uh, playing on the Thursday night normally into a Sunday. So this is a Wednesday into a Saturday. And um, so that they've been in good good nick. So they did rotate six players out of the side uh, in that uh, defeat to Liverpool last night. So there was no Pakatai. He was on the bench. James Ward-Prowse on the bench as well, defensively as well. Agued and Zuma, key elements their defensive setup were... were um, Edward was not involved at all. Zuma was on the bench as well. So um, I think they're in, they're in good form. They've uh, won seven of their last 10 games in all competitions. So they'll take that well. Um, they're only sitting a point and a place below Man United in the table. So they'll have a great opportunity to leapfrog them here. Um, one defeat in the last six Premier League games as well. So it's been a strong performance there. And I think um, winning four of those, it seems that David Moyes has stumbled across a little bit of a formula with Antonio being out. It's led to him putting Jared Bowen through the middle, who's been superb. He'll pull United's defence left, right and centre. And behind him, they've, they've got an ex- excellent setup in Pakatar. We talked about it, provided all three assists for the 3-0 win last week against Wolves. And also in Kudus as well, who's um, come in from Ajax uh, and performed, now starting to perform like we've seen him uh, at the World Cup this time last year and uh, in Eredivisie as well. So, um that's that's superb. And I just think that with United, you say you don't know what you're going to get. They have generally this season kind of shown glimmers of hope and followed it up with an absolute awful performance. Uh, I th- felt that they were going to get themselves up a little bit of siege mentality uh, in that um, Liverpool performance. The fact they were going to Anfield, but they did uh, kind of get battered for, through the 90, conceded 34 shots in that one. Uh, West Ham won't do the same, but they'll play a different setup and a different style. So they won't um, go at United. They will certainly look to sit deeper and then look to try and pick United off as they come forward. But um, yeah, I just feel that this this suits uh, West Ham. They did win this reverse fi- oh, this fixture last season, uh, 1-0. That was as recently as May, so not too long ago at all. And I think they have got the ability to do that. United don't travel well to West Ham. They've only won two of their last six trips there. And they've also only won two of their last 12 trips to London. Both of those were against Fulham as well. So um, no goal for them in any of their last three and only one in, in uh, over their last four games as well. So I just feel that West Ham can have the, the uh, makings of this. I think James Ward-Prowse's set pieces could be a key here as well. Uh, with, with the players they've got to aim at. And uh, that defensive problems that Man United have got, and they, they grow, if anything. 
So we like West Ham uh, on the Asian handicap, draw no bet effectively, and it's now minus 107, incidentally. They have drifted a little uh, after uh, that thumping at the hands of Liverpool. Much changed side, as Jack was pointing out. Um, speaking of changes, change uh, in the dugout for Nottingham Forest, 10 a.m. Eastern. Um, the Tricky Trees are back in action against Bournemouth at home, plus 180. Bournemouth are plus 155. They are the favourites. Draw plus 250. Uh, Nigel Nuno Espirito Santo now in charge. What do you make of that appointment first and foremost? You mentioned that Cooper was was likely to go the other week. Um, but but Nuno coming in, is that is that a plus for Forrest, do you think? You've only got to see the reaction of the Forest fans on on social media to see what they think of it. They're, they're people who watch this club week in and week out and over the last few years. They know they're much in a better position to judge than me. It's not going to be a good appointment, I don't think. I don't think it's going to go down well unless he hits the road fast and comes out of the traps running. And that's why I'm going to have the bet, one of the bets I'm going to have here. But I, I think that um, he's got a bit. He's got a big job here to to replace Cooper. However much Cooper's had a bad run this season, what he did last year to keep him in the Premier League, the way the chairman's dealt with him, uh, and what he did in the in the to get them up, you know, from all the years they had in the Championship was was nothing short of miraculous. I saw them play in the Championship at Queens Park Rangers. And they were right at the bottom of the table, and the year they got promoted, and they were electric. They were great. They were the pace of them going forward. They were a really good side, and I come away thinking this side are going to do well. And they went up that year. They were bottom. They were right at the bottom, and he took over and done amazing. People forget that in football. The fans don't, and I think this is a real, real tough appointment in a club for Nuno to go to. So I think he's got to come out of the traps fast. Got to has to has to come out here fast, and I think he'll have his team fired up for this one. And I think the crowd will get behind him at the beginning, the new manager, but if it doesn't work out, then it's going to be hard for him. Just quickly, how things change in football. Now, listen, like if we were looking at this match oh, a month ago, eight, six weeks ago, and you told me that Bournemouth were favourites at Nottingham Forest, who had that unbelievable home record and we couldn't win, it just shows you how things really, really change. I was so close to to make a case for the, the new manager, factor the fact that Nottingham Forest are at home and that but their record at home but their current form you just can't do that and the problem that you have here is that I don't know how the fans are going to react to the manager I think they will give him a good good start but if they go one nil down I think they'd be on it'll be toxic for the board rather than the manager so I think this is a real tricky one and I think it was a carrot that I really almost took to take the Nottingham Forest here on the money line or on the Asian handicap but I didn't but what I did do is I've gone for something again this is unlike me but I've gone for over two and a half goals in this match I mean, we've we've harped on and harped on and harped on until we, you know, I've had enough of it now. Talking about two and a half goals and over two and a half goals and bad luck we've had this year. And we, next year we're getting getting on it and we're properly getting up back up the profits. But I've had enough of excuses. It's not the time for excuses. It's looking forward. Now, not you, this season we've seen so many overs, aren't we? But we don't get many opportunities to bet overs at the, sort of attractive prices. This one here is, is an attractive price for over You're seeing over three goals, over three and a half, over two and a half, like minus 150s, minus 160. This is minus 112 for over two and a half. And I just think on the price, that's too big. We know that Nottingham Forest are about their top goal scorer, who's, who's going to be out for a long, long time. But everyone else of their squad that was decimated by injuries is back. So they've got more or less everyone back to choose from now, apart from their top goal scorer, which is a, which is a problem for us. But it, I think they'll come out flying here they have to he has to have a fast start he has to get the crowd on side and I think Forrest will come out really pumped but then you look at Bournemouth and their XG at the moment and the way they're scoring goals the way they're playing they've got goals in them they've got confidence in them uh, nine eight of the last nine uh, road matches in for Bournemouth this season sorry eight of nine road matches this season for Bournemouth have gone over two and a half goals so only one of their road matches has failed to score see at least three goals scored. And in nine of their last 11 matches, over two and a half goals has cashed. We were on the overs last week when we in that tragic match, you know, the, the Luton match, which was a force to abandon. And we were looking good on the overs if the game had continued. It was 1-1 at the time of the abandoned. So that, you would have expected that to go overs as well there. I just feel Bournemouth will play their style. They're full of confidence. They've got goals in them at the moment. Complete change around. Confidence sky high. And Forrest have to come out here and put in the performance for the new manager and the fans. And I think the way this is set up, I think this will be a, a, an end-to-end match. And I'm going to go over two and a half goals and minus 112. Value play. Nigel likes minus 112 over two and a half goals. And you're right. Nuno has got a good record when it comes 
to his first game in charge of former clubs, Porto Wolf Spurs, Al Etihad, his last four appointments has won the first one, but plus 180, not quite big enough for us on the money line. Let's get to Luton Newcastle, another 10 a.m. Eastern uh, kickoff on Saturday as that Forest game is a uh, Luton plus 440, Newcastle minus 165, draw plus 325. Uh, Newcastle after Champions League games, uh, generally we have seen goals, whether they've had a good performance or a bad performance, they have they have bounced back or continued on a good run. And uh, Jack, this is a, a similar vein here, but you've you've boosted it with a corners play as well to get us a nice plus money pick. Yeah, I did identify over two and a half goals here and the price just got a little bit too long for me to put forward. And I was also conscious if it was going to continue to go that way, then by the time people got to watch and listen to this, then it would be a little bit of an unbackable price. So I, I put the proviso in uh, or the extra juice with the over two and a half loot and corners as well. Um, if this price for over two and a half goals is anywhere near minus 125, then I'd play it as a single. Um, but as I say, I've got that back up. And obviously, it's to be recorded as such for this selection. So over two and a half goals, over two and a half Luton corners, plus 130, the play. Um, I fancied Luton to get something out of this. Obviously, Nigel's touched on it already. Absolute devastating scenes to watch last weekend uh, with Tom Lockyer going down. Um, hopefully, it seems that he might well be on the road to recovery from that. But I think that's going to galvanise Luton even more than what we've seen already. At home, we know what we get from them. Real atmosphere in a little bit of a shoebox of a ground. The two and army is obviously going to be there as well for this one, packed into that, that away end. And uh, this should be an absolute crack in atmosphere as a result of it. And I kind of fancied Luton to get something out of it. Newcastle again, midweek, another heartbreak for them. Another late goal conceded to knock them out of the cup eventually on penalties as well. So how do they respond? We saw them do that uh, in a similar fashion as far as uh, getting uh, the game against PSG a couple of weeks ago. So um, I, I couldn't quite pull the trigger on Luton on this one. You can get them on, the, on a plus one Asian handicap because I just haven't quite got that confidence in them at, at this moment in time. We know Newcastle could go there and run them, run them off really with the players that they've got. One thing Luton do do is concede lots and lots of chances. Most chances in the box. They also concede quite a lot from crosses as well two areas that Newcastle excel, be it Wilson, be it Isaac. They're the most clinical strikers in the Premier League this season so far. In Trippier, they've got one of the best deliverers of the ball from wide areas, be it a set piece or from open play. So I think they will get plenty of chances against Luton, which certainly lends itself towards the reason I've gone for over two and a half goals in it. No clean sheet for Luton so far this season either. Um, over two and a half goals is cashed in the last three at Kenilworth Road and also in five of the last eight uh, across the whole season. Six of eight. Newcastle away games as well. They've conceded two or more in the last five away games too. So um, Luton tend to score goals. They scored in seven of their eight home games. And let's not make no bones about it. They've faced the best sides in the league. City, Arsenal, Liverpool, Tottenham, all been to Kenilworth Road. Tottenham, the only one to, um, to keep a clean sheet against them. And that was possibly down to the fact they were down to 10 men and having to be a bit more bats to the wall against them. So um, as I said, I think Luton will score. I think they also concede. So, therefore, we only need one more either way round. And uh, I can just see goals in it, given the support behind both sides for this one. So, over two and a half goals there is uh, a fairly solid selection. And, and then juiced up, as I said, with corners. Luton, three or more corners in uh, all six home games so far this season. Um, and So, all eight home games so far this season. They've got six corners against Manchester City, which takes them doing in their last home game. So I said, they played some of the best sides in the league and always won enough corners for this bet to land. And as far as Newcastle is concerned, they conceded three plus in seven of their eight away games. The only one that didn't was that Sheffield United debacle, which was an 8-0 win for them. And Sheffield United still got two on that day as well. So that's just to add that little bit of juice, just in case that price has gone. But that's my thoughts behind it. And that's the reason why I've played that same game parlay rather than the straight up play. So if it is backable, certainly get it on that. Um, at, so minus 125 would be a play for me. But for the purpose of the show, over two and a half goals, over two and a half loot and corners at plus 130. Wolves versus Chelsea next at 8 a.m. Sunday, Eastern. Wolves plus 280, Chelsea minus 104, draw plus 270 here. Uh, Chelsea have lost their last three on the road in the league, but off Nigel, the back of that shootout success over Newcastle in the League Cup to get them through at the semi finals. Uh, again, they're inconsistent. Uh, what do we like in the game at Molyneux between Wolves and Chelsea? Well, I, th I think Chelsea, are, they're a, a team that you just don't know what really, I mean, what do you make of them? I mean, we're almost halfway through the season and you asked me about Man United, Chelsea and perhaps West Ham. I wouldn't know what to expect week on week. I mean, they're just 
I haven't got a hand, hand on them at all. I mean, you can't trust them with any money. You don't know if they're going to put in a brilliant performance. I mean, everyone remembers Chelsea's performance against Manchester City, that you know that 4-4 that four, four four, draw, four. and then the win against Tottenham as well, but obviously down to nine men. But other than that, what have they done? They've done pretty nothing, haven't they? They're very fortunate to get through to the semi-finals against uh, Newcastle, where Newcastle side that were just just running on empty, weren't they? The amount, amount of football they played over the weeks of time. So I, I'm going to oppose Chelsea here in some kind of capacity. Um, Chelsea have got a really bad record against Wolves. They've only won one in the last five, recent record. They've only won one in the last five matches here at Molyneux. And in six matches in total, including games at Stamford Bridge, they've only won one as well. So Wolves have been a bit of a, a problem side for Chelsea. Um, if you look at this current crop of teams compared to the last sort of six seasons or the last three seasons, I would definitely say that this is probably the worst Chelsea team squad we've seen last year as well was poor, but this is probably the worst set in transition that we've seen in maybe 20 years. And I'll argue this is probably the best Wolves side that we've seen in the Premier League under a very good manager, a shrewd manager. So um, I think this is a tough test for, for Chelsea. I, I certainly wouldn't be rushing to bet them at the very low price. I mean, what price are they now on the, on the money line? Sort of They're minus minus one oh four on the money line. Yeah, I mean, I think that's minus money. Would you trust Chelsea? Not at all. I, I, I'm with you. They're, to me, they're in the oh, same no. category as oh, Manchester Jesus, United. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, we're going so well. We were going so well. <laughs> anyway, uh, enough of that one. Um, Hey, got any other picks, on. Nigel? Any other, anything else you want to put? This, there, is the time we, this, this is the time of year that we have to visit a church and pray quite a lot. I, I, I had to make some double. I was going to do one rosary to try to uh, to get rid of to get rid of our um, our bad hoodoo for Christmas and get us onto the winning. Now that Robux involved, we've got to do the three rosaries. Ah, uh, jeez. Anyway, I, um, I said uh, I was with you in terms of the Manchester United spirit, link. Spirit, in spirit, oh. in link. Listen, I'm not okay. with you in this bet. It's the worst bet in the world. Go on, <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, uh, in the, on this season, though, nine home matches in, in Wolves matches, and only two of them you would have lost on betting this match, on betting this market. And the market I'm going to go for is Wolves plus a half. So if we it's a draw or a Wolves win, we cash. As long as Chelsea don't win the match, it's minus 117. And that would have cashed in seven matches. And the only two it wouldn't have cashed in would be against Liverpool and Brighton. And when you consider Newcastle have gone there, 2-2 two, two draw, Tottenham they beat, Villa they drew, Man City they beat. They seem to raise their game, uh, Wolves. It's one who's packed out against the big, big boys. And, um, you know, Chelsea here are, are coming here, it's decimated by injuries, a huge amount of injuries. You know, we, if you look at the injury list of, of Chelsea, Reese James is out, Chilwell's out, the goalkeeper's out. There's lots of them going through. And they've got a big squad. But there's some huge amount of injuries for key players. Uh, they played in midweek, a long match, a, a sort of a, a, an emotional match as well with the penalty shootout win. And their road form this season in the last three matches has been really poor. Uh, lost 2-0 at Everton, 2-1 at Manchester United, which should have been 6-1. Uh, 4-1 at Newcastle, so they've lost their last three games. And Wolves at home, very underrated, very, very underrated side. Chelsea, we do not know what to expect and I think fresh in the mind is that Man City match and that Chelsea match and that Tottenham match. And that's how a lot of betters think about Chelsea. They don't think about the Chelsea that were thumped by Everton last time out 2-0 or, or the Chelsea that really struggled against a, a patched up Newcastle in midweek and were really, really lucky with a 93rd minute uh, uh, equaliser game to penalty shootout. So I'm going to go for them here. Got a good record tradition as well. So I think Wolves plus a half. Wouldn't put anybody off having a small wager on Wolves on the money line. But the way we're having it, the season at the moment, I'm staying a bit safe. Wolves in the draw, minus 117 against us. Chelsea side, that I think it's overrated and I really can't get a handle on. Jack, you've also got a play in this one. Yeah, another point. I think there might be a little bit of trouble on the horizon for Chelsea. At Chelsea. I, I heard talk about um, Gallagher uh, being sold or possibly being sold in January. Pochettino saying he doesn't want him sold. So we'll be interested to see which way that one goes uh, in the coming weeks. But yeah, I agree with Nigel. My thought process on this one is this could be anything. And again, Nigel mentioned it earlier, same rules apply. We can't generally play an over two and a half goal line because this season it's been pushed up so high. This one's at minus 127, which I think is a really viable play. Wolves have scored in all eight home games so far this campaign. Nigel mentioned it already, the scores against the, the bigger clubs in, in the league. Um, it was 1-4 against Brighton. It was 1-3 against uh, Liverpool. Beat City 2-1. 2-2 two, two with, with um, Tottenham as well. I'm sorry, 2-1 two, with Tottenham, 2-2 two, two with Newcastle. Um, all cash in the over two and a half goals line. That's what we normally see with Wolves is they can't score goals. We've seen it time and time again. Uh, this is why this season is so different. Again, another reason. 15 of 17 games this season they've scored in. Cunha, 
and um, the uh, Huang up front as well have, have combined well. They're scoring goals. They seem to alternate between who scores at home and who scores away. But between them, they've, they've done particularly well. Scored 13 goals across the season so far. So they've got a bit of a cutting edge. There's a possibility that Neto might be involved as well, which would be a huge boost for Wolves, even if it is just off the bench. Um, but only one clean sheet at home, which leads me to the goals here. And only two all season, which again is very un Wolves like We used to see him keeping it tight, unable to score. This season, it's completely reverse. So, um, yeah, very unusual stuff. As far as Chelsea's school are concerned, they've scored four goals on three occasions. They've conceded four goals on two occasions. So, again, we don't quite know what to expect from them. Generally speaking, now there's goals involved. They've only kept two clean sheets away from home. They've only kept four clean sheets all season. Two of those were against Sheffield United and Luton. So, you'd absolutely expect that to be the case. We know their problems in front of goal is concerned. Jackson's kind of flitted in and out. He seems to be that kind of striker that will get a hat-trick one week and, and miss 15 chances the next. Um, I've been impressed with Carl Palmer. He's certainly come to the table and he's, he's improved and seems to be in some consistency and is getting amongst the goals and assists as well. And of course, we haven't mentioned him, but the return of Nkunku is massive for Chelsea. Expect it will take a little bit of time for him to settle in, but to him to get some game time uh, in midweek is a massive boost that they'll ha- you'd be able to utilise him in those forward areas as well. So, um, absolutely looks like looks like goals. Obviously, it's only the second ever game in the Premier League on, on Christmas Eve. The last one had four goals in it, so hoping for the much of the same. And Wolves' last Christmas Eve uh, appearance was a goals galore affair as well. That was 5-3 against Derby in 1966. Yeah, I can't remember that one. Um, <laughs> six of the last seven away. Um, Chelsea have conceded in the first half, so it might be decent for a trade. I was just looking at the um, the, the, the parlay for the for the boys' picks as well. Plus two seventy over two and a half goals and Wolves or tie. Effectively, you can parlay that up. Same game for plus two seventy if you want to go in big. As Nigel points out as well, though um, Wolves on the money line. I don't think the worst bet at plus two eighty. Got to get your thoughts on the big game of the weekend before I let you escape. Uh, it's at Anfield. It's Liverpool against Arsenal, 12.30 Saturday. Liverpool plus 138, Arsenal plus 265. Nigel, there has been money uh, for Liverpool this week. There were plus 165 ahead of their League Cup win uh, last night. I mean, it, it, could this be a title decider? I don't know. If we think City is still going to fade, these are the two most likely to go on and, and lift the trophy. They've not been in a significant title race between them for a few years. What, what do you make a, of, of this game? If you if you had a free play, where would it go? Well, I think that's what you, um, you've you just sort of touched one of the points I was going to make on there, that these two haven't been involved head-to-head in a title race for many, many years. And I think that's this is could be quite deceptive if you're a, you're a stats better or you're somebody who's sort of using where we are currently in the, in this in this part of the season. If you're a stats better, you'll be heading to the over two and a half and over three and a half and all these kind of markets. I mean, the last 10 matches between these two sides, seven wins at Anfield for um, uh, Liverpool, three draws. Arsenal haven't won in, in 10 matches or 11 matches it would have been. 46 goals in those matches, 4.6. Every single one of the 10 has cashed, not only over three, two and a half, it's cashed over three and a half. But a lot of them matches are when these sides have been seventh, sixth in the table, fifth, fourth. Well behind Man City, well behind Man United, well behind Chelsea in, in title races. This is this is the real deal now. This is a big, big match, and you know they'll know what Aston Villa have done as well, which is a, a big, big incentive for them as well. I think we've got to take the mindset of how teams prepare for these matches. So I I would expect heavy, heavy money for over three and a half, over two and a half. But I I will, I'd like to swim against the tide in this one. Uh, I mean, we saw last week in the game that everyone predicted goals are Manchester United against Liverpool in nil-nil. I'm not saying this will end nil-nil, but I think they'll pay too much respect to each other. And I think it could fizzle out to be a non-event. I think if Villa win, which I expect them to win, I think a draw ain't going to be a bad result for the two these two sides. And if I was given a, a free bet, I'd probably bet a low-scoring draw, 1-1 one, one draw, something like that. I don't think there's a, it's a cigarette paper between these two sides, as you can see in the betting on the outright market. And I just feel that everyone would expect goals. We've had a 4-4 or a 5-5 in the Cups between these two as well, not only in the Premier League. So I think the market may just get really carried away and the stats punters, betters will come out and just go crazy on the stats, on, on the goals. But I think if you break down the importance of this match with Man City not playing as well, I think it's a, it's a, I think this is a do-not-lose match for both sides rather than go out and win it. So I would probably swim against the tide and go on the under two and a half. Yeah, 1-1 is plus 575, incidentally, under 2.5, plus 123. Jack, any thoughts on this one? 
Yeah, I was smiling along to that because it's pretty much everything that I was thinking of as well. I um, I actually nearly looked at this one. Uh, under three goal line was kind of, uh, I was toying with and the prices just didn't quite stack up for me. But um, I'd, I'd done a little bit of uh, some, say, stats as such for this season um, that you look at the big games this season. Arsenal City, Villa City, Villa Arsenal, Newcastle Arsenal, City Newcastle, all ended 1-0. So tends to be the case that it's that fear of losing in it and also the respect shown to the other side. When it comes down to sort of top four title contenders, then it absolutely does kind of take the sting out of it. And yet, you know, I mentioned Liverpool. They had 34 shots against Man United, but that was an average of XG of 0.07. So they've got a little bit of a habit at the moment of just taking these pot shots. And sometimes they go in like we saw last night with Shabobsoy with that great strike from outside the box. But more often than not, they don't. And I think Arsenal have got a good enough defensive shape uh, in possession and out of possession that they could nullify this uh, sort of misfire in Liverpool attack. I know they got five last night, but um, we're struggling to see them get the best out of Nunes. Um, Salah's having a, yeah, a little bit of an indifferent run at this moment in time. So, yeah, for me, similar pattern. 1-1 was my, my draw prediction. I fancy a draw or, or an Arsenal win in it, uh, if anything, to be fair. One thing I would yeah, say I'm as just... well, Dan, I think that the other thing is here, I mean, so I'm slightly disagreeing with, with, with Jack here. I think Arsenal will go if for a draw. I think it'll be a Liverpool comprehensive win or it'll be a, a draw. I, I don't really fancy Arsenal for the win. That's my my perspective, my, my sort of reasoning and think, prediction of the match. But the one thing I do think will happen, and I think that Liverpool will come out fast. I think it will be an absolute electric atmosphere for 15 minutes. I think Liverpool will come out fast and Liverpool will try to blow them away. I've seen Liverpool blow Arsenal away inside 15 minutes at Anfield before. Going back over time, they've done it in 15, 20 minutes. And I think the bet here is if it's nil-nil after 15 to 20 minutes, start betting the unders at minus 110, minus, minus 120, minus one, that kind of market. Because I think once we get on with the game and it goes deeper, I think both teams will come tactically more and not the chances will, 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 will sort of not come about. And I think both sides will come a little bit more happy with the point. So my, my betting strategy here would be to leave it until 15, 20 minutes in because I think Liverpool will come out fast, really fast. And I think they'll put the pressure on the Arsenal goalkeeper straight away. And I, and I think he's the weak link. Yeah, it's interesting because Arsenal started fast, didn't they, last season? Raced to a 2-0 advantage, then got pegged back 2-2. Mm -hmm. And we've seen Liverpool do something similar, but Liverpool were in a very different place then. Uh, so you've got to think of the game state. You've got to think of the state of the title race as well and the positions that these two teams are in. Uh, the boys a little bit counterintuitive to the recent stats are looking for unders and uh, maybe one nils either way. And certainly in play, if it's nil nil after 20 minutes, maybe we start to get unders and nil nils on the correct score it's going to be a fascinating watch nonetheless that is 12 30 uh, eastern on saturday uh, best bets from the boys before we wrap up here uh, nigel what's your best bet of your three that you've put up aston villa same gay parley win to nil old money minus 110 against sheffield united jack i'm going for over two and a half goals in Wolves versus chelsea but we really want to know what your favorite bet of the weekend is oh, i've not had a look yet i don't know i just follow you two guys blindly Oh, over dear. the course of the season. Oh, dear. You're in trouble. Dude. Um do you know what well, I'm well, happy uh, Christmas in your house? Up. <laughs> you, I you, 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 back boxing, do you know what? Having listened to you two talk about Arsenal Liverpool, I think under two and a half goals would probably be the one. I'm, I'm I'm gonna be at Anfield um for Arsenal, as you know, on, on Saturday. And I and I think you've got it right. I think if 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 there's not a goal early on, mm. It'd be that's it'd be an in play sort of you know Definitely nil nil under play. one and a half you know I think I think that's the way because as you say they both don't want to lose if they both get a point they'll inch a little bit further away from Man City who aren't playing because they're in World Club Cup action um, Villa winning might not be here or there I don't know but yeah and and as Jack points out as well you know the bigger games between the best teams this season there's not been a lot of goals in it so there you go there's my best bet on the fly that's done the um, <laughs> Nigel. <laughs> Jack, thanks for your company. Good luck with your picks. Uh, that is a wrap uh, for Week 18 of Betting Weekly Premier League show. We're going to be back, aren't we, boys, on Christmas Eve yeah. uh, for the best bets on Boxing Day. Have I got that right, Nigel? Correct. Excellent stuff. Uh, stay across all of our Betting Weekly content via app because we win from all of us. For now, it is goodbye. <laughs>